This is my keyboard. There are many like it, but this one specifically is mine. I love this keyboard. I've customized the keycaps. I have specific ones that I like in specific areas. It's signed by people on the back, including Day9, Husky, guys from Team Liquid, Day9's mom, which is probably the favorite signature that I've ever gotten on anything. Um, it has custom PBT keycaps, which I love in Ninja Printing, which is my favorite. Its click is perfect, perfect. There's a little bit of inconsistency between Cherry Switches, and I love this generation of Cherry Switches. The clack is great. The plastics and the structure in the keyboard is awesome. This is a DK9008 G2. It's a little old, and it's technically broken. And I really want it back. So let's fix it. Intel brings DDR4 to the mainstream with their new Core i7-6700K and Core i5-6600K processors. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. So I love my keyboard, and for many reasons. I think it's just spiffy. But, to see if it's worth really fixing, and not just sentimental reasons, I'm gonna take it around, see what people think about typing on it. Okay, John, try typing on the keyboard. Let me know what you think. They travel really easily, but they make a lot of noise. Oh, this is heavy. I like the clicking feeling, but they are too tight. I like it because it's like, it's like you're breaking little glass things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only type with two fingers. <laughs> is it gonna do something to no, me? No, it's not. I am not sure what you are talking about. Seems fine. Okay. So far, people aren't quite as enthralled with it as I am. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Nick, try to take me on my keyboard. Let me know what you think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, people aren't quite as enthralled with it as I am, except for maybe Colton, but I'm gonna try to fix it anyways. Now I have a few broken keyboards. Having a broken keyboard is not odd for me. This one, unfortunately, however, had its USB receiver, because it's a USB detachable keyboard, fall inside of the casing. Now, I haven't actually taken it apart yet, so I don't know if it's as simple as some hot glue, or if I'm gonna have to re-solder the connection on the inside, or if I'm gonna have to take like a USB extension and chop it and solder the wires in. I have no idea. <sighs> Let's go. So first things first, I'm just gonna try to take apart the keyboard. I've taken three screws out, and that's all I can see in terms of screws. Now, from there on, it's probably prying the plastic. So, yeah, that looks about right. Uh, you can find every once in a while there, I just hit one, there's clips. So there are clips, and I do need to get those off. And then get a card down in there that can hold it open. Now I'm gonna to try to find the next one. Here we go. It's holding on on the sides, but I don't see any clips there. Ah, there we go. There's one more, then does that mean there's one more on this side? Yep. Okay, no, the top is off. The bottom must have additional clips as well. Not completely bare, as you can see, but that top bezel's off, and that did reveal more screws, so we can keep on working. Okay, I think I have the, oh! As you can see, this is now in two parts. So that tray is disgusting. I will clean that out. Okay, here's the back of the keyboard, and here is the culprit. And it actually looks like it straight up broke. These two plastic things right here, are anchors that are supposed to be screwed on and holding it on, and they actually broke right off of the plastic on the inside. So I'm not sure what happened to the keyboard. As I expected, hot glue might actually be able to save it. So I'm gonna clean this disgusting thing out and maybe do some other cleaning around the board, and then we're gonna move on.
Now that we're done cleaning these things, a good idea would be to do some maintenance on your keycaps in terms of cleaning it and cleaning the board and doing all that kind of stuff. If you want to check out maintenance and lubing techniques, click up here for a previous video that we've done. It's called the Ultimate Mechanical Keyboard Keycap Guide, and there's a table of contents thing. You can jump to maintenance or lubing. Now would be a good time to check that out. But I'm gonna move on and start trying to fix things. So the problem isn't that the hot glue cracked and broke off. The problem isn't that the solder contacts broke. The problem is that the plastic bits in here actually snapped right off and the mount gave way. There were two screws going through it. So I'm just gonna move where those are. Oh, so there's big screw holes here and here, not in all four corners. Even though there's these two stands, nothing screws into them. This is probably a standard backboard for more than just this keyboard. And I think we're back to the hot glue method. Um, I could do this with other types of adhesives, but hot glue is easy to take back off. So if this happens to not work, I won't cause any permanent damage or anything. It's gonna be fine. I'm gonna put a little dab right over top of where it was supposed to be screwed in. I'm also going to put some along this line here, which should, in theory, help keep it against the plastic and have it not fall back in. Okay, so it actually seems to be in somewhat okay. I can try to, oh, I'm bleeding. Um, that's probably fine. Everything's okay. Um, anyways, we can try to pull it up a little bit. Nothing really seems to happen. And yeah, seems pretty solid. So I'm gonna try to make sure that I've lined it up properly. I'm just gonna try to plug this cable in. It seems to be fine. Plug the connection in. PCB didn't move at all. I think we're good to go. I'm going to plug this into the PCB and try to type something on it before putting it all back together properly. If it works, we're good to go. I'll close up the case. Success. If not, we'll have to figure something out. Why did my screen go black? What the hell? Does that make any sense to you? No, it doesn't. Oh, I think there's some problems. Keyboardtester.com. Oh my goodness. I think it works. There's some weird things going on. Okay, the weird things that were going on are no longer going on. There was some crazy lag when I first typed it in, or plugged it in after the driver was installed, so I'm not sure what that was about, but it does seem to work. That's really exciting. This keyboard got me through all of my post-secondary education um, and was there for the almost the entire time that I had my mineral oil rig and all that kind of stuff, so I'm really happy to have it back. <laughs> okay, let's put it back together. This is gonna be so annoying. I have to pry all four clips up and then flip them over because they're stuck on a ledge. Come on. Okay, so after more effort that I would like to admit and Brandon's help, we finally got the bezel thing on. The trick was there was a guide rail on the inside, so you had to slot it within the confines of the guide rail. Time to put the last final three screws inside. One little Easter egg that I noticed you can see just barely the voided warranty sticker that I pounded right through in order to get that screw off. Uh, nice little tidbit. I like voiding warranties. It's fun. Okay, so it works. Due to the hot glue, it kind of turned into more of a like home arts and crafts project than a hardcore soldering job that I thought it was going to be. Oh well, I'm happy my keyboard works. Hopefully you guys found that interesting. Moral of the story, even if this wasn't all that complicated, is if your stuff breaks and you're far outside of your warranty like I was with this, just fix it if you can. It might not be that complicated as we saw today. 
not that bad at all. The thing just came loose and fell backwards. Take your stuff apart, check it out. If you can't fix it, you gained experience from taking it apart. If you try to fix it and you fail, well, it was broken anyways. Yeah. Simple, powerful, beautiful, Squarespace, 24 seven live chat and support just in case you don't know what you're doing. It's only eight bucks a month, just in case you don't have tons of money. That comes with a free domain if you sign up for a year. It has responsive design, just in case you want it to scale on any device. It has a commerce module, just in case you want to sell things. Cover pages, just in case you need a job for a resume or something. You can start now with no credit card required and start building your website immediately. But don't forget to use offer code Linus for 10% off of your first purchase. Thank you to Squarespace for supporting this. Squarespace, build it beautiful. Thanks for watching. If you want a cool t-shirt like this, check out the description down below. We have a bunch of them there. I don't know if you can get this one anymore. Nice uh, limited edition, but you know, whatever. Consider using our Amazon affiliate code to buy things like keyboards, just in case your favorite one in the whole entire world happens to die. Um, I don't know what else is here because all I really care about is I'm plugging my keyboard. Uh, go to our forum. There's new forum software and it's awesome. Check it out. Consider becoming a contributor. It helps us do things like roll out new forum software. And yeah, subscribe. Watch this video, which is the ultimate keycap replacement guide that I referenced earlier in the video. And I'll see you next time.